Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to the series of lecture on uh, Actinide Chemistry. In the last lecture we have uh, discussed about uh, the term symbols and we have also tried to see that uh, how we measure this UV visible spectra of um, any and give it a lanthanide or actinide. And we have seen that the three types of transitions are possible in uh, lanthanides and actinide that is uh, intra-configuration transitions that we also known as FF transition inter configurational transition that is known as FD transitions and the charge transition transitions. When you are having electrons in the F orbital, then the two transitions that is inter configurational transition and intra configurational transitions are possible. But in cases when you are having no electrons in the F orbital, then whatever transition we see or whatever color we see in the compound that mainly comes from the charge transfer transitions. And another very good example of actinide that gives this charge transfer transition is a uranyl ion because if you see uranyl ion it has a FCG system. So if you compare the electronic spectra of lanthanide and actinide, the lanthanides have bit more sharper spectra but with a lower epsilon whereas actinides they are having a bit broader spectra and because of more diffuse nature of the 5f orbital compared to the 4f orbitals they have more intensity and they are more participative in the reactions compared to the lanthanides. So let us see some of the spectra but uh, yeah this is uh, the term symbol that we have already calculated and uh, if you remember then uh, we have calculated the term symbol for uh, europium 3 plus which is in uh, F6 system and we have seen that if you just calculate the term symbol for this you are getting 7F is the term and if you just use the coupling, LS coupling, you are getting a value from uh, 0 to 6. And out of this 0 to 6, we have used the Hunt's rule to get uh, the established configuration or the ground state configuration. And there we have seen the ground state is nothing but 7 at 0 because it is less than half field. And if you see this spectra, the ground state is 7 at 0. So here in this, in this particular figure, the ground state of all the trivalent lanthanides are given from where the transition will start up to almost 40,000 centimeter inverse and you can see for europium it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and again you start from the 7F now you reach to the 5D and then again 5H and so on. Similarly if you just try to get it for neodymium that is ND3 plus which is an F3 system you will get a state that is 4I9 by 2. I hope you can drive this state and you can at least say that uh, out of different states that you drive using this term symbol that uh, which one is the ground state because that is the state from where the transition will start because we are talking about the FF transitions and from there the transition will start and depending on the different selections rule that can apply for a given transition we can get different transitions like this or this or this we will just see some of the spectra that uh, how they exactly look like when you record this spectra in the aqueous medium. So and this is the percolate salt spectra and dissolved to the water media. So you can say that starting from pseudonium, then neodymium, and then samarium. So you can see the both are having some F electron. So they are mainly having either F transition or FD transition. As you have seen that the FD transition is mainly prominent in cerium, pseudonium, and terbium. These are mainly dominated by the FF transition. If you just look carefully the spectra, the first thing you can always see is the epsilon value. It's very low. It's less than maybe 10 in many cases. Whether you choose any of the lanthanide and you see in the tribal state, this is very low. This is because these are mainly FF transitions with the del L is equal to 0, so they are parity forbidden they are not allowed but because of some admixture of the different parity into the forbidden we see this transition but again they are not allowed so they are in having very weak intensities now one thing if you see very carefully that these are very sharp transitions and again the sharpness comes from the deep buried orbitals because we are in the transition is between the f and f orbitals so they are deep buried and not having much influence from the external environment the other selection rule that we know 
that is equal to zero. That is spin change, or you can say that spin multiplicity change should be zero. And here you can again say that your initial transition or your bound state is having spin multiplicity of two s plus one is equal to three. And if you see that a transition in which suppose this is not followed, and again as I said that this is not allowed. So if you are having this and this, both possibilities that it is a laboratory forbidden and your spin is plus minus one, but not zero, then it is called doubly forbidden transition and their intensity is again decreased to a large extent. I will just uh, repeat it again for clarity. What I mean to say that the spin multiplicity should be same when you are having a transition. If your spin multiplicity is changing in a transition, their intensity falls drastically because this is forbidden transition. So ideally your delta should be zero for a transition to be allowed. And here again you can see your spin multiplicity is three and here it is one. So here, here you can say there is a change. So this is not allowed transition. And because of that the intensity is very weak. But if you compare this with this these transitions are comparatively more allowed and having a better intensity. Obviously, if you compare the same multiplicity, then again the overlap between the orbitals and other admixtures come to the picture. But generally, if you are having a transition with the same multiplicity, they are fairly more allowed compared to the transition which is changing both. Your, uh, there is no change in the FF or del L value and there is a change in del S. So, these kind of transitions are not, not allowed. Here again, you can see, if you just see this. Um, spin multiplicity then it is 4 and whatever is with the 4 they are a bit more allowed compared to the one with the lower numbers here I have marked a peak with the red color some of the transitions are very much affected by the environment although we say that uh, these are the inner orbitals but still still they can have some influence on this kind of transitions and they are known as hypersensitive transitions this is one of the hypersensitive transitions that is uh, occurring in the Newtonian spectra and people use this kind of transition to get information about the condition structure, the metal ligand complex, the nature of metal ligand complex around in a in any phase, you can say in solutions also. I will again show you the spectra of samarium and in a very similar way you can see the spectra of other ions like as europium and here you just remember this peak, it's a very important peak when we talked about the luminescence spectroscopy. But uh, just for that reason, I just want to remember this that uh, you have a transition from 7f0 to 5l6, and that happens around 394. If you see, this is around 394. So, this is uh, one of the more most prominent uh, peak in the European 3 spectrum. Again, you have different prominent peaks. So, what is the use? One of those use of these transitions are and uh, you can say the colors that you are getting you can see in all these we are having some transition in the visible region when I say visible region I am talking about maybe 400 to 700 region maybe in this region and you can see there is certain peaks so always in this region there are some peaks and as I have told you in the previous slides that when you are having some band it will give you something called spectral color and when you have some spectral color the complementary color is visible to you and since all these are having some peaks in the visible region here again you can see the list this again you see this is almost white if you see this I just remove this for the clarity and if you just draw the 700 and the 400 you can see there is almost no peak or maybe very small in certain cases you can say the intensity is so low so if you see most of the time if you have in europium salt it is almost time colorless it is colorless similarly if you have a turbium salt not, not very good color but if you take the oxide that is 92 or 3 this is a very good blue color 
whereas most of them are colorless. These do have some color because again you can see some transition to the visible region of the spectrum. So whenever you see the transition in this region, you can expect some color when you prepare solutions of this kind of uh, length and height. But if you are not able to see any peak in this region, it should be colorless. Here I have just tried to compare the spectra of trivalent lanthanides with trivalent actinide. Here we have taken example of uh, europium and here it is americium. And we know that it is both are same as the system. One thing you can directly see from the spectra is the epsilon value. See the epsilon value it is less than 4 but here if you see the epsilon value sorry this is the optical density so we have to calculate the epsilon value using the relation e is equal to pca so absorbance you know from here e you have to calculate and concentration is given so you can calculate this for the path length of 1 centimeter so you can calculate and we found that the epsilon is very high so you can see that they are trivalent in nature, European 3 plus and Americium 3 plus. And since they are having an environment of 4F and they are having an environment of 5F, and as we have said initially that the 5F is more diffused, and then because of that, the interaction or you can say that perturbation in 5F is more compared with the 4F. So these transitions are more allowed, or their epsilon is on the higher side compared to the transition in the lanthanide. So this is one of the example I've uh, given for the transition of uh, trivalent lanthanide and lanthanide, where you can directly see that it's very difficult to tell about the broadness, but uh, in general the 5f should be more broad compared to the 4f. But here since the scales are very different, uh, you may not be able to get it uh, straightforward. But uh, their broadness should be on a higher side compared to the broadness that we observe into the lanthanides. So we have taken care of the trivalent. Let us see that uh, how the tetravalent and pentavalent actinides look like because uh, in lanthanide we are mainly talking about the trivalents because their group proxy state is plus 3 but when you talk about the actinides you can have uh, plus 2 to plus 7. So let us see that uh, how the other oxygen states will look like when you talk about the actinides. You see the actinides, as I showed you that their oxygen state can be varied from plus 2 to plus 7. You see almost all the oxygen state have some color. Everybody is giving some beautiful colors and some of the real solutions that uh, they put in the literature. If you see those colors, it is suppose you take the neptunium solution, this is neptunium. In different oxygen state, it is like uh, from 3 to 7. So it's like 3, this is 3, this is 4, 5, 6 and 7. If you see, there is a drastic change in the color when we are moving from 3 to 7. Suppose you take the plutonium solution again. There is a beautiful color that changes from the 3 to 7. And the more interesting thing you can see this diagram. Everybody is plutonium pole. What we are changing is the media. We are starting with an acyl media, then perchloric acid, then nitric acid, and finally we are making some collides, which is again in aqueous media of little higher pH. So you can say, although everybody is plutonium foo, still their color is different. Why? Because when we are having different kind of complexing anion into the media, even they can very well interact in a very different way with the five of orbitals of these plutonium ions, and because of the splitting of those orbital in the presence of different kind of complex in anion, they gave very distinct UV spectra and some of the lines are getting uh, maybe allowed and some of the lines are getting uh, forbidden and that causes change in the color because now you are having a different spectra, different perturbations, different uh, aforbital splitting in the presence of different kind of anion. So you can see that just by changing the anions you can change the colors here and that shows that how strongly this F orbital, the 5F orbital has influence or how strongly it can interact with the external environment compared to the lanthanides. If you see the spectra, neptunium 3 will look like this one, neptunium 4 is again looks very different than neptunium 3, neptunium 5, then neptunium 6. One thing I just want to mention here, if you see the spectra, 
everybody looks a bit different from other. Suppose you see Neptunium 4, it has two peaks. But if you see Neptunium 5, it is having only one peak. And if you see Neptunium 6, it is having a peak but in the NIR region. The peak position is around uh, 1225 in this case. It is around uh, Neptunium 4, so it is around 964. It is around uh, some 715 or so. It is around 980. So you can see that every oxidation state has some different P. Or you can say they have some distinct spectra. So we'll try to use this information when we study the applications of uh, this UV spectroscopy into the length management chemistry. Do remember this that they have very different spectra. Again, we have seen the spectra of uh, Neptunium with different colors and with different wavelength. And here again, just uh, if you correlate again with the color, you can see this reason. Maybe up to 700 or 750 reason. You are getting some peaks here. Here also, you are getting some peaks. So, here you see, although this intensity is very, very low, but still it is enough to give you a very good color. So, whenever you have some peaks in this region, then definitely you are bound to get some color into the solution. And this intensity of the color will depend, obviously, depending on the epsilon or depending on the strength of these peaks, that how strong these peaks are absorbing or how strongly they absorb the light. So, depending on that, you will get the corresponding complementary colors. We will see the UV spectra of the plutonium. Again, I have shown you that uh, from 3 to 6 when you go, you are getting different colors. And if you see the spectra, then 3, 4 and 6. I have not shown you the spectrum of plutonium 5. And uh, I hope by the time you are able to understand that uh, all these 5, whether you are talking about plutonium 5 or uranium 5, they are very unstable with respect to the disproportionation and because of that the getting spectra of plutonium 5 is not that straightforward it will get disproportionate and in the acidic solutions and if you are using uh, too much of basic chances of hydrolysis is there so because of the disproportionation we are not giving the spectra of uh, plutonium 5 and all these spectra where plutonium 3, 4 and 6 they are not that easy to form as I told you in the very beginning that uh, one of the most stable uh, oxygen state of plutonium that exists in water is generally plus 4 in the acidic media but since their redox potentials are very close to each other so in solution you will get ideally all these 3, 4, 5, 6 everything should be there in the solution and 5 will again will be there but will be dis disproportionate to 4 and 6 so we are mainly getting 3, 4 and 6 and then you have to stabilize them to get a spectra because you cannot have a mixture of all these things and you cannot record the spectra. So you have to stabilize them before recording the spectra. And these are some of the reagents that are commonly used for the stabilization. For plutonium 3, we generally use hydroxylene and hydrochloride. For plutonium 4, it is the sodium nitrate. And for preparing plutonium 6 solution, we generally use an oxidant that is SCLO4 itself is acting as an oxidant. We use this powder, uh, plutonium oxide or plutonium oxide solution in the solution form. We add perchloric acid, we do 2-3 times dry and then we again dry it and we again add SCLO4, we again dry it. By the time we are not getting a spectra that is characteristic of the plutonium 6. Here I have given you the different peaks and their molar absorbity for the plutonium solution. Here I just want to emphasize that if you see you are changing the medium and there is some change in the peak position and uh, molar absorbity that is because you are changing the ligand and that we have seen also when you are moving from uh, SCL to HNO3 you can see there is some changes in both in molar absorbity as well as in uh, wavelength and we will try to see that uh, since I have shown you that uh, when you are having a SCL and uh, this is SCL and this is HNO3 you can see almost one is you can say orange and one is green so you can see that just by changing from chloride to nitrate the color has been changed and first thing you just I want you to notice that if you are starting from plutonium 3 and going to plutonium 4 there is some spectral changes that I have already shown here when you are starting with plutonium 3 and 
protonium 4 is having some spectral changes and when protonium 4 and protonium 6 there is again some spectral changes so if you are having protonium 3 you can easily identify this yes this is protonium 3 so if you add nitric acid to protonium 3 or HCl to protonium 3 there is change in these peaks with the increasing acidity there are some changes and these changes directly correlate some interaction between protonium 3 and nitric acid and protonium 3 and chloride ion so to understand the kind of interaction and the nature of species that has been formed in different conditions or different acid strength we can use this kind of spectra here again the same thing is for the protonium 4 like similarly we can see for the plutonium 6 also there is a constant decrease when you are adding SCL because it will lead to formation of different species of plutonium in the hexavalent state so because of the change in the speciation there is a change in the spectral intensity nitric acid again there are certain changes and from these changes you are able to tell that yes the species are different the species that exist at one molar may be very different from the species that is existing at higher molar maybe 9 molar SCL in this case and uh, 10 molar nitric acid in this case so in this table you can find that uh, most of the actinides that uh, we generally use in for our different kind of studies that uh, they are like plutonium, americium or uh, neptunium and different conditions in which we generally prefer to store them or uh, so the spectra that is in different conditions are given in the previous slide that is in uh, nitric acid as well as acid medium but here we have just compiled the data in the perchloric acid medium why because the perchlorate that is SCLO4 is having an ion that is perchlorate ion that is CLO4 minus and this is kind of a non-complexing anion and when we record spectra in this kind of anions but we assume that whatever spectra we are getting it is the spectra of the particular lanthanide or particular actinide having a very less perturbation into the their condition sphere because of the presence of perchlorate ion so the labels are not very much get splitted so we say that it is something called not exactly free ion but uh, very close to the free ion spectra and you can see that uh, different ions have different lambda max and different molar absorptivity constant for example if you say that neptunium 5 it is having a major peak around 980 whereas if you see neptunium 6 it is having a peak at uh, major peak around uh, 1225 again neptunium 4 is having peak at around 960 so just by recording the spectra you can see we are having information about the different lambda max from the table you can get information about the different lambda max and their uh, e max and that is useful when you are trying to identify a, pro a proper species or you can say a given species into a medium so these are the applications of the absorption spectra in general we use them for the we can use them basically for the qualitative analysis that you have a system suppose you want to understand that uh, okay i have given you some system and you want to understand that uh, what is the particular oxygen state suppose i give you some solution of uh, plutonium or uh, neptunium or uh, any other actinide or lanthanide the first thing you want to understand that okay what is the oxygen state of the metal ion is there in the solution you can just record the spectrum and as i've shown you and you can see from the list and uh, you can see from the previous spectras that different oxygen states have different lines and just by looking the spectra you have an idea that yes in my solution this is the most prominent oxygen state you can have a mixture also even in the case of, of mixture suppose i am having a mixture of uh, neptunium 5 and uh, neptunium 4 so if you are having a mixture of both suppose neptunium 5 and neptunium 4 then we know that neptunium 5 peak is coming around 980 and neptunium 4 peak is coming around 960 so even if you are having mixture of oxygen state just by looking at the spectra we will able to tell yes this is the oxygen state that is present in my system so one of the very crucial information that you get is the qualitative analysis just by looking at the spectra you can get information yes this is the ion this is the oxygen state that is present second thing is that can we make some quantitative analysis out of this answer is yes why because here in this table here in this table as you can see that 
we have given you the epsilon values for different metal lines you can see and we all know that from the Lambert weight law e is equal to a c n suppose you measure you measure certain spectra again i am just taking example of neptunium suppose you measure neptunium spectra neptunium 5 you are getting a peak like this which is around 980 you get some absorbance and what you want to calculate what is the concentration of the neptunium ion in the solution and suppose you are getting a pure peak of neptunium ion and you can just use this epsilon around 395 one centimeter absorbance whatever you get from here and you can calculate the c so this can be used for the quantitative estimation as well in cases even if you are having a mixture then depending on the peak positions but suppose you have a, a mixture of uh, neptunium 4 and 5 so neptunium 4 is coming somewhere here and neptunium 5 is coming somewhere here the 4 is around 960 this is around 980 even for the mixtures if the peaks are well resolved you can easily get the quantitative information that okay how much of the neptunium is present in neptunium 5 how much of the neptunium is present in neptunium 4 so it can also give you information about the quantity so you can do some quantitative analysis also similar is the case with plutonium also you can do the quantitative analysis of any other actinide that you want provided you know the epsilon in that particular media because epsilon do change depending on the media so to get the knowledge of the quantitative analysis one thing should be always taken care the media in which you are you want basically to get the quantity you should have the epsilon for that particular media we can study the redox reactions what i mean by the redox reaction we all know that uh, they are very redox sensitive both uh, actinides are little more redox sensitive because lanthanide do have a plus three oxygen state in most of the time but uh, the actinides are uh, rather very redox sensitive and uh, suppose i want to study some reactions let us assume that i want to study some uh, disproportionation reaction of uh, let us say example of neptunium only so we will have a spectra like neptunium and i want to study i have chosen this because it contains uh, all the oxygen state of neptunium if you see this reaction you are having neptunium 5 you are having neptunium 4 you are having neptunium 6 and all these three neptunium 5 980 neptunium 4 around 960 neptunium 6 around 1225 all these things are bare apart from each other and suppose i want to study the redox conditions in which this reaction is complete or i want to understand that at what acidity what is the kinetics of the reaction and how the reaction is going on what we can do we can start with this at a very zero time in this you will get only 9 atp but as the time will go on suppose you have fixed the acidity you will start seeing these peaks so we can follow the redox reaction we can follow their kinetics we can also follow many times the mechanism in different kind of redox reaction using these peak informations and since we have shown that uh, the even vary the positions and the epsilon they do vary not very much but they do vary depending on the ligands you add so here i just given you an example of uh, some titrations that uh, how the ligands will affect the complexation so here just for example, suppose you have a solution in which neptunium is coming around 976 nanometer. This is the solution which I have specifically prepared in some kind of uh, ionic solvents. So the peak is not at 980 but uh, a little on the lower side. But suppose you have some transitions that is coming at certain peaks and in that particular solvents, I have added some ligand. And you can see that peak is shifting from the 976 to 991. So by the shift you can get yes some of the neptunium has been complexed and if you keep on adding the titrant or you keep on adding the ligand you will get a spectra like this and we can use different mathematical equations to get the exact complexation constant between this uh, neptunium 5 and that particular ligand and we can also get information about the epsilon of both neptunium 5 and neptunium 5 and whatever L you are going to use.
So those information we can directly get from the absorption spectra. And detection and estimation of length and air and in the environmental sample. This is the, one of the very important thing that we can do with this. Uh, as many time you can see the Emax is very high, more than 100 many times you see. So what does it mean? It means that when you use an equation and you have a spectrophotometer which is quite good enough that you can easily measure 10 to the power minus 2 order of absorbance in the range of 0 0.01 I should say absorbance. If you are having a spectrophotometer of this kind that can easily measure 0 0.01 then if you put this value as 0 0.01 and suppose your epsilon for such a species, let us say this is more than 1000. So you can say it is 1000 C into 1. So what you can see easily, the C is nothing but 10 to the power minus 5 molar. So here you can say, even just by simple measurement, you can get an idea about the concentration and that to a very low concentration. Because when we talk about the environmental sample, the concentrations are very very low. In fact, uh, much lower than whatever I've shown between per minus 5. And many cases we use some uh, chromophoric ligands uh, such as uh, arsenal jo, to get a uh, very high epsilon for that particular complex. And for that uh, we just mix the actinide or lanthanide that we want to get the information of the concentration with that particular uh, chromophore. And then we record and there the beauty is that the epsilon goes to as high as 10 to the power 5. And if your epsilon is such a high, you can easily go to very very low concentration of the lanthanide and lanthanide and you can really see the samples into the environmental media. With this, uh, I would just like to end up today's lecture and uh, we will meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much.